update on the artist glow up. I have figured out my reading schedule. So it's a lot. I made a whole graph about it and so that I can know how many pages to read for each book and when I'm reading each book during this whole thing that I'm doing, right? So it's a glow up, an artist glow up. It's something I came up with where basically it's a time to just dedicate myself to art, whatever that craft is for myself and everybody else can do this too. I did a whole video on it, which was uploaded at some point. And the reason I don't know now is because I haven't uploaded it yet as I am filming this, but it will be uploaded and I described everything. So it's just like basically for anybody that struggles with productivity, focus, juggling your creative interests along with whatever's going on in your life, you do enjoy art, you see yourself as a creative, you want to be an artist or whatever, but you feel like you are not in it, you know, and people who know what I'm talking about know what this feels like, you know, okay, I didn't go to art school, I wanted to, but then I didn't. And then I was gonna major in fine arts in my regular college. But I decided not to do that. It was a whole thing. So but I never lost that desire and care for art and creativity and that world and someday I hope to live in it again and by that world I mean the art world with the communities the people the creatives I want to get back to that someday but at the moment it's just me working a nine to five job and I I don't know I feel like I'm not good at being the artist that I wish I could be and there are a bunch of things that I'm interested in creatively um, photography filmmaking painting, drawing, sewing, embroidery, knitting, like there's so many crafts, like I have a lot of different interests and things that I hope to, you know, dive into someday, but I'm picking one craft for this glow up. The glow up, it's a, I made up, let's say I made it up as like a class or a course to take, but it's not an actual course. And you basically create your own curriculum. I have yet to make my curriculum yet my schedule yet. But the challenge is a challenge. So glow up challenge, I prefer calling it a challenge over a course because it's not actually a class. So the artist glow up challenge, <laughs> artist glow up challenge, it is starting on Monday, April 1st. Today is March 28th. Yeah, Thursday. So I'm starting it on Monday, but I haven't figured out my schedule yet, my curriculum, and I don't know exactly how I'm going to do it. But what it is, is I'm going to be trying to get back into music and try to actually make my EP slash album. I don't know what it's going to end up being. It's probably going to be an EP, but I don't really know. I don't even know about making the first song. I have a couple of songs on Spotify already. Like I've recorded songs, I've released songs, most of them are covers, two of them are original songs. So I've released those before, I don't think that I'm going to put those onto my EP, I think I'm going to do a whole new thing. Um, and I just want to do it for me because I was kind of going to give up not like really give up on music in general, but I kind of was like, you know, I'm probably not going to be you know, who I wanted to be when I was in high school. And I was like, I want to be like Halsey or somebody I want to be like, a rock star slash pop star, or I want to be in a band or all this stuff. Like, I kind of think I'm probably not going to be doing that. But because I'm I mean, I mean, I'm 26. Now it's not that I'm running out of time necessarily. It's just that I'm like, at this point, what that path looked like to me in high school probably is not what it's going to be. But I can still do music It's just different. And my interests are also sometimes very niche, like, I wouldn't be like, to me, doing music or being a part of the music world could be just being a jazz singer or something someday, like, I don't mind, like, however old like I've got time, because I can do anything I want whenever I want. I can be in my 40s, 50s, even 60s someday, if I can still sing. I don't mind if that opportunity comes then where it's like, Oh, I just go to a jazz bar and sing every weekend. Like I just, I love that kind of stuff. So I don't need to be a rock star. Like, I don't need to be famous. I'm not really looking for that anymore. But I still appreciate music and that as a craft. And to me, the reason why I haven't really done like done it properly, I think is because I want to do it with the respect to the craft, I want to do it right. I'm not in any rush to 
be a musician or a performer or a famous artist. Like I'm not in a rush to do it because I want to do it right and I want to do it for the craft. And that means, you know, learning about how to properly play instruments. I'm just not in a, in a rush, but that was a whole thing. But what I want to do this year is try to be that artist, whatever that is to me. And my craft of choice to focus on is making an EP. Yes, so the challenge starts April 1st and it's supposed to go April 1st to the end of October. So either October 31st Halloween or sometime in November, but like that's the span, that's the time frame that I'm looking at, April through October. And so how I've structured it is you create your own curriculum with whatever craft it is that you wanna do, whether it's music, photography, clay, like ceramics, drawing, like anything you want to do, writing as well, whatever it is, it's a creative craft, that's what you can do. And you just create your curriculum and certain goals and intentions, like set your intentions, which I haven't, I might need to do a video about that. What are my intentions? Because I, I wrote some down, but that's something you might want to do. Set your intentions, come up with your goals, gather up your, um, what, I, what is it, like your tools that you need and things like that. Now, when this is uploaded, God knows when, it's probably, I mean, it's a little late now. So you can start whenever you want but and do it whenever you want, but I'm doing it April through October. So I'm going to be making an EP. That means that there's going to be music practice that has to be done. That means there's going to be writing, um, all of that. And then at the same time, I have some books, so that's what we're talking about right now. <laughs> some books, I'm creating a reading list for myself and everybody else can do a reading list too. If you like to read, if you're totally not a reader, then don't waste your time, it's totally okay. But there are two books that I thought we should have as the actual textbooks of this class that I made up, this challenge. If you would like to participate, there are two books that are a part of the actual curriculum for everybody, I think, but you don't have to. But anyway, that's what I'm gonna be doing. Like the standard textbooks for this made up class. It is The Artist's Way by Julia Cameron and then The Creative Act, A Way of Being by Rick Rubin. This one I'm a little skeptical about because I've heard some people have some issues with it, but I'm just gonna read it and take it with a grain of salt and get from it whatever I get from it. And then there's this one which has helped a lot of artists actually, but again, neither of them are perfect. It's not about one path to creativity and one path to being an artist. You can be whatever kind of artist you end up being. Like you have to be yourself and you have to be your unique version of whatever that art form is to you. So this is just, if you like to read them, I think it'd be good. I've never read either of them, but the schedule is, I'm gonna start with The Artist's Way and then I'm gonna read this in the second half of the year. This book is structured already as a 12 week kind of practice. So every chapter pretty much, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see that, but every chapter is a week. So I'm just gonna do the 12 weeks. I'm pretty sure it's 12 weeks, right? Yeah, 12 weeks. So on my little schedule that I made, I did break it up to 12 weeks of this book. And then it's going to be this for the rest of the year. So I have four categories of books that I'm doing and you can do this too if you're a reader and you want to do this. So the first category is the textbooks. So it's broken up this and then I'm reading this. So if you're going to read them too, we can do it at the same time. But this is the order for this category. Then the other category is one or two books on an art craft or art history era, like something specific to, I mean, it could be anything you want, but it, probably it should be specific to the craft that you're focusing on for this year, for this challenge. So I have two books picked out. So for this category, since I'm doing music, I am first gonna read this book. This is The Rest is Noise, Listening to the 20th Century by Alex Ross. And then I'm going to listen, not listen. What, did I, what? I don't know if I said anything correctly just there because now I'm like, did I say I was gonna listen to this? I'm gonna read this, I don't know, okay, then I'm going to read How to Listen to Jazz by Ted Gioia, Goya? I don't know, haven't read either of them. This one is really chunky, but again, I broke everything up into the proper schedule so I know how much I have to read of each book, and it's not that crazy. Guys, I had no idea because I'm such a slow reader, and I've realized now it's not because I'm slow at reading, it's because I'm not consistent enough, really, 
at reading. I'll read a couple pages of a book and put it down for weeks and then try to pick it back up. And that's why I've been reading this book for over a year. And I was trying to finish this before Monday, before April 1st when I start this challenge, but I'm not going to finish it in time. Like I'm totally not. But I've been reading this for too long. It's a big book and I just, it's, I'm not consistent enough. That's what I've realized. Because what I calculated with this stuff is that you only have to read for most average size books, like 200 to 300 page books, you only have to read like three to four pages per day of a book to get it finished within like two or three months. Like that's, I mean, that sounds like a long time, but that's not that crazy when you're like me and you read one book per year. I don't really read one book, book per year, but like a little bit, kind of, yeah, it depends on the book. But anyway, so it's not that crazy if I read all these books, just like three or four pages a day, but I'm only doing like four books at one time because it's broken up like four books from April to like June or July, let's say, and then four books from like July to October. So anyway. So we're reading The Artist's Way first, and then at the same time, I'm going to be reading one of the kind of history, art history books, let's call them. Let's call that category the art history category. So the first one I'm going to read is this one. The rest is noise. It's basically just self-explanatory from the title, listening to the 20th century. It's art history. He is a um, art history. It's music history. This guy, Alex Ross, is a music critic or a music writer something where like he writes I think he wrote about music in the new the New Yorker music critic for the New Yorker so he basically just went through the music of the 20th century and I think it's he wrote about it so I don't know I haven't read this obviously I think it'd be really good it's really big though and I don't know yet I have to read it but this one is the one where I have to read four pages per day to finish this yeah, four pages per day to finish this by August 26th. So I'll be doing this at the same time as The Artist's Way. And then after that, I'll read the book on jazz. So like I said, I like jazz music. I think that it's, it's kind of foundational for me. And it's one of those genres of music that does influence like my singing or my energy like certain jazz like cool jazz is like my spiritual level if that makes sense so I don't know I like jazz I think it's it's a huge um like turning point in music history I don't really know but just jazz is like it's I mean people don't think of it as as significant as it is I think but I love jazz music so I think it'd be good it's not that big but this one also I have to read four pages per day just because I'm going to be reading it after the other book and this is so long that that's how it's structured so this one then this one and then the other category is oh one or two books that are like a biography or autobiography of an artist that you admire or are inspired by or just like to learn more about so i have two books for that i have a portrait of joni mitchell reckless daughter by david yaffe yaffe I already kind of started reading this and I think it's going to be really good. So it's a biography about Joni Mitchell. I love Joni Mitchell. Um, she is a singer songwriter. I think I'm going to be a singer songwriter. Like that's the kind of music that I do. And I think she's just, she's amazing. And I don't know a lot about her on a personal level. I just know about her music. So I'm really, really interested to read this. And that's the first one I'm going to do. And then I'm going to read Rememberings by Sinead O'Connor. So this is like a memoir slash autobiography by Sinead. Um, I don't know a lot about her either. And for a long time, I had no idea who she was at all. I just knew like when I shaved my head in high school, my mom would always call me Sinead O'Connor. Like I never had it shaved that short though, but my mom still was always like, you're being like Sinead O'Connor. Like she was, but she was like criticizing me, but not really, but she was like, she didn't like it that I shaved my head. But I was, that's always how I associated Sinead O'Connor. She's like, she had a shaved head. She was controversial. That's all I knew. But now I've listened to her music. I highly respect her. I think she's an amazing artist. And so I, I know that she had, this is going to be probably a dark read because she had trouble and um, a lot of trauma and things like that. Uh, but it'll be very interesting to read. It's very short. Um, and I'm really excited to read this one, but first I'm going to read the Joni Mitchell one, then I'm going to read this. Both of these I only have to read three pages per day, so that's not that bad. And then the final category, yeah, 
the final category is fiction books. This is totally optional because it's just if you want to have an extra little bit of entertainment that's not going to be this stuff that other categories. So I'm doing two fiction books and I have so many books that I just went through and picked something out but I'm going to first read Tom Lake by Ann Patchett. The reason I chose this one is because I think it'll be a good spring read so I'm going to start this one first and it's not that long like it's not that crazy and I think it'll be an easy read. You can look up what it's about but it's just like a simple like um probably it's a uh, literary fiction or something I think you would call it if you're talking book categories but I think it'll be a nice one to read just an entertaining simple read. So I'm going to do this one first and then after that I'm going to read Lazy City by Rachel Connolly. I've never heard of this book but I saw it at Barnes & Noble the other week and I picked it up. I got it because I think it's literally perfect for me. It's about a girl in Ireland, right? Where is it? So she was in a school in London, goes to Belfast, Ireland. So she's from Ireland. So it's kind of a romance, sort of, I think. Like, I think there's something that she's struggling with. I don't want to read all this, but she moves back home to Belfast. She gets an au pair job. There's like these two guys, but it's not like a romance. It's more like, I don't know what this is going to be, but then there's something about religion and faith in like the church and stuff like that. It's just like Ireland, religious stuff, boys. Like this is just like perfect for me. So I, I don't know. I haven't read it, but I'm really, really excited. So I definitely snatched this up immediately when I read the back of it. So yeah. What is, yeah, somebody said messy love, quiet grief, and the hangovers in between. That's what one of the reviews said. So seems perfect for me. So I'm going to read this, then this. So how it's going, and these are also three pages per day. So let me just show you what I'm reading at the same time. <laughs> this is going to be, it's going to be crazy. It sounds crazy to read all these books at the same time, but it's only like four or three pages per day. It's not that crazy. So going to start with The Artist Way, okay, for 12 weeks. And at the same time as reading this, I'm going to be reading The Rest is Noise and The Portrait of Joni Mitchell and Tom Lake. So all of those at the same time. And then they'll all kind of end between June and August. Then I'm going to be reading The Creative Act and then How to Listen to Jazz. Rememberings by Sinead O'Connor and then Lazy City by Rachel Connolly. So yeah, these ones are going to go from around July to the end of October. So that's kind of crazy, right? And I don't know. It's I really just hope that I can be careful with this and not have the reading take over the actual creativity because then it's like cancel, cancel the reading, stop that because the point of this is to be doing some kind of creative thing, right? To be doing the art. That is the point. This is all just supplementary stuff. I think the artist way and the creative act are going to be good to read, but everything else is totally like just supplemental and I need to stop immediately if it becomes, not stop immediately, but I think I shouldn't read all these books if I get the feeling that it's actually distracting me and becoming more of a priority than the actual creative thing, the actual music that I'm going to be doing. So that's why the curriculum is really important. So I'm going to create my curriculum. I need to do that like maybe tomorrow or something. I need to do that because then it's the curriculum first, like the actual goals and the tasks and to do's of the creative project. That is going to be the main focus. And then this stuff is just like in the background, like an actual class, right? It's the studying and the like, well, the reading is a part of it, but the studying and tests and assignments and things like that. And then the reading is just supposed to be happening in the background. You're supposed to be doing it so that you actually learn some bonus stuff, but it's not the actual assignments and the projects, right? So that's how it is. That's what it's supposed to be. But again, this is my first time doing this. I don't know how it's going to go, but we're just going to see. So those are the books at least that I've figured out. So if anybody else is doing this as well, I'm curious about what you're going to read. And I think I just, I always get overexcited and I set something up that's probably going to be too challenging for me to actually do, but maybe not. Maybe I can do it. I will tell you what my curriculum is once I create that, my goals, my modules, whatever it's going to be, like the projects. I want to let you know once I figure that out. But until then, this is all I've got. <laughs> um, so for now, that's it. I will get back to you once I figure out 
the music part and how I'm going to structure creating this album. It's basically going to be probably music practice and then the writing and the recording and the producing and then the album. And so album slash EP. So hopefully by the end of this, we're talking the fall winter. The goal is for me to have an EP that I'm releasing to you guys. That's the goal. And that's pretty crazy. And I think I can do it, but I just got to get going. Problem is, like I said, I have a nine to five job that distracts me because I get up and I go to the job and it used to be more chill where I had more ability to like think about myself more. <clears throat> but nowadays the job is more like the responsibilities are higher. And so when I'm in the office, I'm like, it's the work, which is how it's supposed to be. But I, I don't want to be, I'm not a working girl as much as I'm like a, like, let me do all these other things and I want to read books and sleep. <laughs> anyway, and daydream and I do creative things and I'm like thinking all the time. But anyway, today I took off from work and then tomorrow I have off from work because it's Easter weekend and I just wanted to have some days to myself. So I actually took today and tomorrow off. So today has been like my perfect day. Not fully, but it's like I, I know a lot of people probably feel this way, but it's like I was just made to like get up and get ready on my own time and go get coffee and then do stuff like this where I'm like having fun and being creative and filming a video and doing these things like I was like made for this and to like be out in the sunshine in the middle of the day like I wasn't made to be like stuck in an office in the dark for eight hours a day I'm not in there eight hours a day but you know and I'm able to leave but you know it's not natural, in my opinion, to be sitting in an office all the time. Like, for humans, like, we're living these weird, unnatural lives. Anyway, that's another story for another day. That's all for now. I will follow up with you. We're going to be doing this, and I'm going to be filming videos about it over time. Yeah. So, stay tuned, and I will catch you later. I hope you have a good day, and yeah, bye.